All right. So well, February 12th, 2018, we're talking to Mario Paletti, and we're talking right now about his service in the Navy during the Korean War. I might add that I'm a resident for 45 years. Wow. Oakdale resident years. for 45 years. Yeah. 45 years. Wow. There was, there was grassland when I moved here. The cows. And Those were the days. Those were the days. <laughs> but you started your military service. You were in Brooklyn. I was in Brooklyn. I was, it was 19, 1950. I was 19 years old. And I, I, joined the Navy because I was going to be drafted into the Army, which went directly to Korea. In 1950 was the worst time that we had for the military because Korea was just, it was a, it was a city, it was Seoul was a city, and this was after MacArthur, who was the, the Supreme Commander in Japan. When he did his duty, they, they said, well, Korea is going to be the next war that we're going to be involved in. And it certainly was. So you joined the Army, joined the Navy rather than go to the, draft, the Army? He drafted in drafted. the Army, yes. And you were on an aircraft carrier? I was on an aircraft carrier similar to the size of the Intrepid, which is in New York City. What was the name of the aircraft carrier? USS Tarawa. If you picture my hat over there, the Tarawa is T-A-R-A-W-A. -A. It's an island in the Pacific, and I was proud to serve on that. And each carrier has a number, and mine was CVA 40. 4.0 is perfection, 4.0. So they gave us 0.0, that was perfection. I was in radar. Radar was was uh, something that was brand new. The English perfected it during World War II. However, America got um, to do radar, and they put it aboard airplanes. Uh, airplanes at that time were props. We had no jets at that time. And I flew off the carrier on, on a prop-driven airplane to operate the radar that was aboard the ship. It was aboard the aircraft. Was that a thrill? It was a thrill not only to see the aircraft from the air, like the size of a postage stamp, but it was also a thrill on landing because you, you would carry uh, a cable that, that was carried by a tail hook and when you landed on the deck. Tail hook had some accidents. Uh, as I told Diane earlier, we had some some uh, tragedies on board the ship because the, that cable would snap and it would knock the man over. Not only that, they had planes that would be catapulted off the ship and of course they had to go in one direction and that was off the bow. The bow. So we had no jets, but prop airplanes. Prop airplanes was the Corsair, which was a gull-wing plane. It looked like, shaped like that, if you don't mind me using my arms like that. And, and they had a bomber, which was outfitted with radar. So that's my account of life on board the ship. I was on that ship for four years. And where did the ship travel to? The ship traveled from not only to Korea, but Japan, the Philippines, Australia, uh, a lot of the islands, Iwo Jima, on the way to stepping stones to Japan. I episode on the Navy ship, the USS Tarawa. And so was United States ship, USS. And as I went over the, the numbers and the name of the ship is the town. Named after a battle in the Pacific. 
So you must have made a lot of, was, was it the same crew for those four years or mostly the same crew? People coming It was mostly the same now? crew. I was in charge of a, of a platoon that would see to it that we ran what they call a radar picture um, in CIC, which was Combat Information Center, which is just below the flight deck, which would have cuts in the passageway. Those people were, were the same people that I went on board with. But however, during, during the amount of time that I was on board that ship, there, there were changes of people, new people coming on board, old people going to a different station. So yes, there was a change of the guard, but they call the change of the guard. Are there any other questions that you would like me to answer? I have one question about, like, what was it, like, the daily life on the ship? Like, where did you sleep? Did you sleep in bunks, or did you, did you have your, you know, Good question. Uh, the bunks that we slept in were five high, and the guy closest to the overhead, they call it the overhead, not the ceiling, he was almost touching, touching the overhead. And we had a locker, which was something like two by two, to keep everything we owned in that locker. And we did have, every day was completely different. There was a laundry day. There was a peacoat locker day where we wore navy peacoats and the white hat. I don't remember the white hat, but that was a, is a separate entity where everybody had their peacoats in their locker. And we did have a porthole similar, a round porthole, like similar to the clock size. And when they fired the guns, you had to make sure that it was close because the powder would come in the window. Window, we call it a window. So they let you know when they were going to fire the guns so you could close the windows? Yeah, you, you would be able to tell because the guns were just above us. Did you keep in touch with any of the crew members? Did I keep in touch with, with the the members of the crew right. that were on. Yeah, we went to places like Paris together. We did a tour. Venice was since, another tour. Since your service. Since your service. Since the service, I belonged to a, a group of Navy guys that uh, were, were uh, on, they went on cruises, and we went to different places together. One of the fondest memories I have is is having a tour of Las Vegas. Now we were not in the Navy anymore, but we just met there for a tour. It was a nice nice time. The Grand Canyon, seeing the Grand Canyon, and uh, visiting all the casinos. Are you still Kept in, in touch, touch, like to this day? Are there well, some that you still as, we, as we're getting older, I'm gonna be 87, but as we got older, we, we see less and less of each other because some people have have passed on, and uh, my, some of my fond memories of people that have passed on. So we don't get together as much as we used to. That's a huge question. When you were in the war, were you um, were you an artist at that time? When did you begin drawing? Because I'm thinking it must have been pretty amazing for a young guy to see like Paris. And Italy and places like that, and how inspiring Louvre, for an artist. The Louvre in Paris, yeah. all, the, all the top, the Vatican Museum, Michelangelo's work on the ceiling. So, I, I mean, I were you an all. artist then when you saw that? I, I appreciated you know? art then. Okay. However, I did major in art in high school. I majored in art, and I didn't pick it up again until after I got out of the service when I became a, 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 a substitute teacher. For the Connect One School District. So now, did you go to college when you got out of? Um... I went to college. I didn't finish college, and that was one of the sorriest things. I went to uh, a college in California called the Art Center, and that was in LA. And at that time, I got married and went with my new wife to California, and we lived there for two years. So I didn't finish school. But I always went to the, the school here in New York, uh, School of Vision. That's when I finished my school, or tried to finish my school. I was traveling for Massapequa at that time. 
Essapequa was is where I lived, and uh, I would travel board the trains, the Long Island Railroad, to get to school and back. And did you have children at that time? I had one child. The Connecticut School District, how did you get that job? Well, I had a, a state certificate in art, and when I approached them, I, I uh, wanted to teach art to the various groups that lived in, in, uh, in, in Oakdale. And some of them are still my neighbors today. And uh, I used to go every day on call uh, with, with the school district. Not only did I do Connect One, but I did Savo and I did Blue Point. So that was an interesting aspect of my career, where I became an artist, finally became an artist, but not enough to, to be a uh, a full-time teacher. Then I joined Wet Paints. Wet Paints is a group in Sable that is dedicated to the arts. Uh, we have a problem with Gillette House right now because there was flooding there. But uh, we hope to get that back on, on the road so we, we can use it again. And when did you join Wet I joined Wet Paints about 30 years ago, so I'm one of the oldest members there. Yeah. And what, that, that Wet Paints group, so you guys really encourage each other? What's, what's the idea yeah, of we, artists We meet once together. a month to show what we do in the month. Okay. Then we have the other, the other three uh, model nights, where we have a model who poses for an hour and a half or two hours. And we all sit around and, and draw the model. Other than that, we could use a still life. Uh, we set up a still life and then we draw the still life. So you meet one night a month or three nights a month? No, we, we, we meet every week. Oh, you meet every week? Every week. Well, that's every, a commitment. Every Tuesday. That's a real commitment. Some people don't come every week. You know. Right. And how big is the group that does come? Well, on, on a night that we have critique night, we have about 100 people in show. Wow. We try to get them all in that, in that house, Gillette House. And can anybody be a member, or you have to have You should be interested talent. in arts, evidently. Yeah. Or is everyone who comes an artist, or not? Some are just spectators. Oh, that would be nice. You guys can I come. I just admire the art. Make sure there's enough chairs. We have an annual Christmas party. We know how that is. The Christmas party? Well, having enough chairs <laughs> right, to, be, uh, to come as models. Now we know why they need it so much because they were here to We pay models. <laughs> we pay models so much an hour. Um, it'd be like uh, a quarter. Really. So you're looking for different kinds of We look for different kinds, kinds of, of faces. faces to do. Yeah. Because we only do faces. And do you do, oh, all of you are portrait artists? Not really, because Tom does other stuff and you do other stuff. Yes. You do pets, actually. Yes, I, I'm, I do. I do I a, the a, a number of things. I mean, I do pets. animals. Tommy doesn't really do animals. Right. And and I, I do birds, lions. How, I always do lions. How would you and describe Ukraine. it, though? How would you describe your audience? Is it abstract? Is it modern? No, is abstract is realistic? not recognizable, actually. This would not be called an abstract. This is, this is more realistic. Obviously. And the lion and the... Uh, I get involved in many, many, many seems different seems subjects. You to change. You seem to have a... a you, you seem to not always... And I get joy out of teaching. People. So how does it strike you what to paint? Like, do you... I find so, a lot of subjects so interesting. And I said, yeah, I want to do that one day. So but you got to know some rudiments. Yeah. you got to know horizontal from vertical. Right. What you would call it, the basics. Do you basics. prefer doing something like that? Like that? You would almost consider that... Every, every be... subject matter is really a challenge to me. Uh-huh. And so I get joy out of teaching people how to do that. But you, I think as Diane said, so your style is basically realism because you set things as they are. Right. 
Okay. I didn't see that one. Blue Point Restaurant. This one. Is, is a picture when when the street was closed to traffic. Oh, I love that. And there were no people here. There was just this, they lowered this garage door. Have you ever eaten here? No. It's an interesting place. That they have some interesting things like scallops. We'll there's a bar together. around the corner. And there's these two, there's two pilots, there's another one at this end. And so I stood in the middle of the street and sketched these, sketched the sign which, which was always there. But the people weren't there, I put in those as an afterthought. And this restaurant is still here, just as yeah. it is? And what's it's it called, Rosie? Close. 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 Now this, is this on Montauk Highway? This, this is, is on Middle Close. Road. Oh, Middle Road. Middle oh. Road. It's and before Corey Beach. Did they Corey know Beach that you, is right behind you. Did they know that you made it? Not until I showed it to them. Did they want to buy that? They have, they have a, a Oh, a print. a print. How do you get the prints this, made? This is a print. I go to a place that makes prints. Oh. And you can see Are they them. numbered? Actually, I don't number them. Yeah. But when I go to do the car show on a, thir on a Thursday, where the, where the car show is by Wendy's? Yeah, right. and then Thursday nights. I put out a table with pictures. Oh. These, with these pictures. That's good to know. So if and somebody's you looking them? for your art. And I, I put out two tables the size of these, and I put my art on the table. Oh, well, and that starts up again, what, like March, April? I would think what, so. When yeah, the weather's when nice. Weather, when, I'll have to come. Because when daylight savings time is not, is not here, and of course, it, daylight savings time really kills the show. Yeah. Well, most people won't. I went there out. once when we had some car. But I really like this. This is really great. Now, what did, did you, because the building itself is unique. Is that what made you draw This was or built, or I think like it started in 1927. Or, or just the tradition? Tradition, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's really, that's Yeah, this great. building still stands. Now, that, that would, I would imagine that any time you draw or paint a picture of somebody's building that they would, they would want to purchase that, right? I have done that. Yeah. I've done yeah, several things. Yeah. Yeah. That's past that. The Baltimore Oriole. That's an original. That's a Baltimore Oriole. And that, um, you like animals. You like birds. Oh, you like birds. My favorite artist is Michelangelo. Uh, not only have I seen all of his work, what? but the, the one that was they call the Pieta, it's a pity, it was in St. St. Patrick, uh, St. Excuse me, St. Peter's Cathedral, and it was, it was a, a Dutch job that threw a hammer at it and broke the nose on the, on the Pieta. And so now it's on the glass. Oh. It's on the glass now. That's your favorite. That's my favorite. Did you ever do any sculpture? I have done some sculpture yeah, in a red clay. They worked on red clay, gray clay, and of course, in marble, I, I have never touched marble, but, but I did work on those other media. How did you like that? I kind of liked it. I have a piece that I've shown in wet paints, but uh, it's, it's, not, it's not one of my favorites. I'd rather show a different painting every week. So that's what the, the chief is for. Are, are you churning out a different painting every week? I try you to. produce something every week? I try to. That's, do you have a schedule that you work on? Yeah, like when I leave here, I'll go home and work till, till the daylight Judy goes. comes on. Yeah. <laughs> Tom does too. We all do. And what do you feel like that gives you? It's, a, it's, a, it's a good Not only the experience, but uh, also to show people how easy it is, for, for me it's easy, but how easy it is to start something and, and see that it's finished. Sometimes we bring in things that are unfinished. But that's to show the new people in the group how they should be working every week. And not just you know, sit on your duff and forget about what pace this, this week. So have you, do you feel like it's given you discipline to be part of that group? Or? Definitely. And, and do you see yourself improving all the time? Well, I, I take joy in teaching other people. I have some private students 
that I teach, and they're amazed at how they can produce something like in an hour's time that there was nothing there before. So if I take an eight by 10 canvas like this, one of the first things I'm gonna do is wet it and then throw some color on it right away. Let the color drip, which is a nice effect. And that's more of a watercolor technique. This is acrylic. A watercolor technique, I let the paint run down and drip. And then it becomes something when I finish with it. And we get joy of teaching other people how to do it. And this is not the, the right way to do it. You gotta do it this way. And Tom does that. If anybody wanted to look at your artwork, Purchase your Someone has to like you, my like they my work to go begin. To the, uh, Thursday to like nights work. to the car show that they have in Oakdale. To see my work. In the parking lot there that used to be Wendy's. 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 Yeah. yeah, and they can usually find you there. They can usually find me there. Sometimes it gets a little hairy. I may have a vet's meeting right after that. So in order to make that now we know why it was so hard to pin you down to get an interview. You seem very busy. <laughs> I am busy, but I'm always open. Before I leave this earth, I want to. I want to have at least some more students to go to go oh. by, and uh, so I can just just no do retirement so much. for you. No retirement. Even oh, I though I am retired. And my leg hurts once in a while. You have too much of a passion for art. Yeah. I do. I must admit that I do. <laughs>